it won't let me play it without or like go on it without downloading it. Hmm. I don't know if anyone else had that problem, but like I went onto the website and it just wouldn't let me do it. I, I honestly have no idea what I'm doing, but this is vaguely interesting. <laughs> I'm not exactly sure what the point of this is. Are you doing it right now? Yep. What, like, so what do you do? I have no idea. <laughs> I think it's, you can get it to move and talk and I have no idea. Hmm. I'm just looking at the slides for it and it says it's for problem solving. Yeah, I kind of, like I skimmed the slides. I just wasn't really sure exactly like how, like what that meant. Yeah, because I think it kind of, like it has to do with programming and how there's different solutions to things, I think. It says like your task is to move the ball in a circle or whatever. And then you use like programming to do that. Okay. Oh. This is actually kind of interesting. Yeah. Like the next one is like to code the word hi. Yeah, I'm looking at that part right now. Yeah. So how you can write. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then there's like a paintbrush and stuff. Has anyone ever coded before? No. <laughs> yeah, that'd be a, it'd be a good software to learn programming on for sure. Cuz I like I like Kagan does it give you a step-by-step -step process kind of of how to do it? Um not really. Um, it just kind of threw me in there and it's like, here, do this. Oh. I was on it earlier today and on the sides it tells you, it kind of shows you what to do. Um, like there's a tutorial on the side of the page. I don't know if you have that or not. I was gonna say like you could totally probably Google like scratch how to or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's probably so many videos. Ooh. I made a circle, guys. <laughs> yeah, her video too, like the slides, gives a pretty good description, I think, of how to do it.
I figured out how to make the circle bigger. <laughs> this is kind of actually very exciting. I can imagine how interesting this would be for our students. So did anyone else make anything? Or no? Is anybody else looking at it right now? I'm looking at the slides because that's the most, like I can't get onto the actual website, but I'm looking at the slides. It looks complicated. It's actually not once you start like trying things out. Yeah, I, I guess it's kind of one of those things where it like seems hard, but like when you actually get to practice doing it, like it's not as difficult. Yes, I, I can see how this would be actually quite gratifying to many students. Mm -hmm. So you can add music to it? Yes. Hmm. That's cool. Okay. Actually, they have a large library of like sounds that you, you could actually have students. Oh, like do a composition of some sort using yeah. this technology. That's cool. It's very interesting. Yeah, that's, that's a good thing about it is that because even though it's not like coding and programming isn't in our curriculum, like you could easily use that for like an arts ed curriculum maybe. Like there's lots of ways to kind of incorporate it. Exactly. Well, and the kids that we're going to be teaching are going to be very focused on technology. Yeah. Because it's just how, what they grew up with. Mm -hmm. So if we learn how to incorporate that into our classrooms, they're more than likely going to enjoy the lessons that we're teaching a lot more. Yeah. So has anybody played The Sims before? Really? Mm -hmm. I played it way too much when I was a kid. Does anybody know like the premise of Sims? Um, you can basically create your own people. And then build them to how you want them, and most of these you may basically just take them through their life, and you can make them have kids and buy houses and cars and have jobs and everything, and then so they die and you have something for their kids. And all along. Yeah. So Sims is basically like virtual life. Yeah. So you have 
all of these, like you create your first initial character in mm -hmm. like general, if you just get like the Sims, you create mm -hmm. the original character and then you can get married, you can have kids, but you have to have a job because you have to be able to make money to pay for things to put in your house. And it's, uh, it's realistic in a way. I usually gave up and used the cheat to give me fifty thousand dollars and did that like three hundred times. <laughs> that's that's not really how we want to teach our kids how to play that though. <laughs> <laughs> we we uh we want them to to learn how to play fair. <laughs> teach them about real life. <laughs> <laughs> You have to work to earn your money. We don't want to teach our kids that you can just cheat your way to getting, like, all the money. Oh, Lord. I had a nice house and nice cars after. Liz, you didn't earn the money. <laughs> it was difficult trying to figure out what that cheat code was and how to punch you in, though. And then you used it a bunch of times. <laughs> If you would have only used it once, it would have been like, okay, that's that's kind of understandable. But you used it a bunch of times. That's just, that's overuse. <laughs> so, now knowing the basic premise of how to play The Sims, um, she wants us to talk about how it could be useful in our classroom. Which, did she want to know for like specifically for Sims or just video games in general? Well, just video games in general, but Sims is a good place to start. Okay. Yeah, like I don't, for the Sims, Obviously, since I haven't played it yet, I don't really know exactly how that would be incorporated. I mean, I guess, yeah, the fact that it, like, teaches you life skills. And schools don't really get a lot of that. Things that I always found really fascinating in high school were in, like, our our home economics classes, uh, we once had to do, we were given a budget and options for houses and jobs mm -hmm. and vehicles and all of that. And we had to actually like create a life, but with realistic parameters. And I yeah. found that like extremely helpful because it was kind of preparing me for what it would be like in when I actually had to do all this stuff on my own, when I had to learn how to make a budget and how to like incorporate all of my expenses into said budget. Yeah, we didn't have anything like that in high school, but I do remember when I was in grade eight, we did something kind of like that, uh, where we were just randomly giving, given a job. And so based on that job, like we had an income and then based on how much money we had, yeah, we had to like buy a house and a car and have a phone bill and things like that and kind of add up how much money you were spending every month. And yeah, it was interesting. But I think there should be more, yeah, like more classes like that in high school and stuff. Yeah. yeah. So Sims is kind of an interesting way to delve into that but kind of lightly with games yeah the only thing that would make me very apprehensive about this is the fact that there is the option to get married and have your sims do things that adults do and i know that there's a lot of kids I'm not going to be sexist in this. There are a lot of children that would just go straight into that. Yeah. Just solely focus on, I want my Sims to have all this sex. And that's it. 
Yeah. So. I think that, yeah, that's a good point because like when you look up Sims, kind of like if there's videos about it or like memes or anything, that's kind of the first thing that would come up. Like it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be about, oh, like all these life skills and you had to buy a house. Any, like, sexual things, all of a sudden, like, try for baby. So it could be worse. And yeah. people always go under the covers and all you see is like rose petals falling and the covers moving around. Yes, that, that is true, but it, it's the still true. Be, like there's a lot of people who are going to focus on that just because of the premise of, oh, they're having sex. Yeah, like mm -hmm. the immaturity. It's not that they want to see them having sex. It's just the idea of, oh, my Sims are having sex. This is so interesting. Yeah. You're trying to get them to focus on, like, getting a job and keeping a house and taking care of everything else and paying bills and all that. And they're just like, let's have all this sex. Which in itself could be a lesson learned because you never know. It could get to the point where they have too much of it and they lose their job and then they can't buy food and then they have to like go homeless and <laughs> die. I don't know. I don't know what would happen in that situation. <laughs> I usually try to take very good care of my Sims, so. So, um, what other video games do you think could be helpful in a classroom? Um, the video game that I'm doing for the video game project is Dreambox. And it's an online math game. And so the way it works and and it it went along with um, the G's principles really well because unlike a lot of kind of math games, like this one has like an avatar that you can create and so you have this character and then you go through levels and there's different worlds um, where you play different games based on the curriculum of the grade you are. Um, and so we were looking at that and yeah, I thought that was interesting because it gives students a way to learn math kind of more diversely than just the typical, you sit in a desk and, you know, the teacher writes stuff on the board and you copy it down. Um, so yeah, I thought that was interesting. Nice. Did you guys ever go to like coolmathgames.com or whatever? Yes. Yeah. Like I feel like a lot of those, like even if it's just like they can be like educational or whatever, like sometimes mm -hmm. I still pay them and like it requires like a lot of logic and stuff like that. Yeah. Does, any, does everybody else have ideas for their video game project yet or no? I'm thinking about using um, Minecraft because I know that quite well. I play it with my brothers all the time, so. Yeah, that'd be good. How would you relate Minecraft to school? Um, I've always found that it can be really helpful in, since I'm an arts ed major, I'd want to focus it on like an arts perspective or even like a home ec perspective of designing a home. Stuff like that. I haven't really like fully thought it out yet, but I'm yeah. 
<laughs> what about everybody else? I'm not sure yet. Bring it on. Does anybody play any like video games of any kind? I was thinking of doing something like Assassin's Creed to do something with like history. Okay. But um, I'm not sure how school appropriate going around killing people is, so maybe not. And doesn't Assassin's Creed have cursing in it? Mm, define cursing. Pretty sure they drop some like f bombs, <laughs> and they talk about like prostitutes, and they call them <laughs> whores and stuff. So I feel like that's not gonna fit well with a lot of parents. Yeah, I feel like that could be considered cursing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I'm I'm kind of rethinking what to do now. I, yeah. There might be like. There's probably some sort of historical game that's similar to that. They're not as fun as all the stuff seem not. Well, yeah. <laughs> kind of the whole premise of Assassin's Creed is to kill a lot of people. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there there is some, like, his, there is historical merit to Assassin's Creed. I one of them, you're playing a big part in the American Revolution by going around killing key people. So, I mean, it teaches Yes, something, which, which but, is where I was going. Like, I, I do understand the historical merit. There is history in Assassin's Creed. It's mm -hmm. just how they are showing okay. that history in a very violent and aggressive way that I feel would upset a lot of parents. Oh, parents should stop being so sensitive. I agree, but... I mean, the kids would be like 17, 18 before they learned about the revolution anyways. They haven't realized that people died by that age then. Still not something that we're supposed to be having in schools. I know. So it is, it is a great idea, and if Assassin's Creed was less about the killing and had so much less, like, cursing and talk about prostitutes and whores, it'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> but just to, but where it's at right now, it's probably not the best idea. Back to the drawing board on that one. Yeah. <laughs> Brittany, you're taking this completely serious. I haven't seen you crack a smile this entire time. <laughs> what? All I heard is my name and no smile. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've seen you smile all class and you've been joking around the whole time. <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> There's your smile. I just don't have the energy for this right now. <laughs> um, so the other part of that question was um, how might you use video games to support student learning? Which we kind of went over. But does anyone have anything I've else? I've only got 10 minutes left. I feel like a lot of kids would find it a lot more interesting to learn through games than by sitting in a classroom doing nothing, like writing notes. Yeah. So it could keep their attention a lot better while still getting across basically the exact same information. I also think that with technology, like students are just more comfortable when they're 
learning with technology nowadays. And I think that's important because if they're in a comfortable learning environment, they're going to be more willing to want to actually learn. Well, and video games doesn't always mean something that you sit down at the computer or some kind of console to play. It could also be something like um, Just Dance or Dance Central or something like that that you bring into mm-hmm. a, I was a gym class. Yeah. You have to present. Because there are, and there's also lots of other games that you can get with the Connect that are movement based. Yeah. Like even if you had a Wii and you brought in like Wii Sports or something like that, Mm -hmm. that's it's a video game, but it's also something that you could use in your classroom. Hey, Wii boxing is a workout. Okay. And like. If your school doesn't have a tennis court, yeah, there you go. Oh, no, like, <laughs> come on, yeah, that's how sure. I learned to play tennis. I yeah. honestly know nothing about tennis, but I can play it. On the- <laughs> Just saying, or like we bowling if you want to, if you're doing a unit. Like we and when I was in phys ed in high school, we did a unit on bowling and we had to learn about how um, the scoring worked, like how to add up all the scores with strikes and spares and stuff. So could incorporate that. Exactly. And also with like sports and stuff, there is mathematics that you can teach with that. Yeah. Like, if you're teaching a physics class, you can teach the physics of a bowling ball. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. How does your throw affect the way the ball rolls? Or even with curling or boxing. Or you can do physics with pretty much anything because physics is pretty much a lot of stuff. Yeah. Does anyone else have anything to add? She didn't ever give us very much to talk about today. No, that was, yeah, there was only those two questions. I don't know, like, how long she wanted the video to be. I think this one's also supposed to be shorter. Okay. <laughs> because we're meeting as a group again. Yeah. Well, at 7 on Wednesday. Wednesday. There's supposed to be and one at we- 7 and then one at 7.35 with yeah, when we meet with the other two groups. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm not even sure. So, how is that going to work? I have no idea. What do you mean? Like, like the special groups still only say groups A and B. That's the only thing it says. It doesn't say who we meet with for the second meeting or anything like that. Well, I think we're with group C and F. Yeah. We're with, it's A, C, and F. We're meeting with C and F this, this week. But so I'm not sure. Our meeting, which is half an hour. Yeah. Then we'll shut down our call. And we'll join another one with the other people from the other group. Excuse me. And that's when. So, so and we have to record both, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I guess what we could do is we could just um, maybe meet with the two groups on the Zoom that um, Christine posted. Mm -hmm. And then if we want to move to like a private one where we can record, then then like everyone's there. So yeah, it'd be like an easy transition. All right, so did everybody get their um, their infographic in? Yeah. Yeah, has she marked those yet, do you know? I was, that was my next question, is if anybody has received their mark on that. I think she extended the due date until today, so probably not. 
Okay. Yeah, that's what, because I was, I was going to go, I handed mine in on, like, Thursday, I think. But then, yeah, she extended it, so I don't think she's going to have any of them marked yet. And I also don't think she's in the country right now. It's probably why she hasn't responded to my email. Yeah. Um, so, the week of... <laughs> Uh, I'm looking at my calendar. The 22nd, I will not be participating in the group meeting or in the class meetings. Okay. Because I am in the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Nice. So we've got our tech rehearsal on Monday, and then we've got a performance on Wednesday. So okay. you guys have to keep me updated but yeah I emailed her about yeah. that I haven't heard back so okay hopefully it's okay that I miss class we don't have a group meeting yeah. that week I don't think October 24th don't we no it says oh no, no we do not meeting. yeah but we do have like a class meeting a so. class yeah I will okay. not be there for that. We'll have to um, get someone else to make an account. Mm -hmm. No, because there's no there's no group meeting that week. Oh, like for our group? Yeah, it's just for oh, the whole class. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, I see. Yeah, there's no there's also no group meeting. Next, next week. week. Yeah. Yes, next week is a week off, mm -hmm. which is nice. Does everyone know what they're doing for the second assignment, like the storytelling mapping thing? I don't know now because everything is considered research, but that's what the project is. But we're not allowed to conduct research. So. I just don't know what, I don't even know where to start. Yeah. Like, this is getting to the point where I um, tend to just take the L on this and hope to make up for it in the rest of the assignments. Mm-hmm. Does uh, anyone else, like, has anyone else done it yet? No. No. It's not due until the 17th, so I still got time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I am a horrible procrastinator. Like last year yeah. when we got the email that she was postponing the deadline to the the first assignment, I was like, that's good. I haven't even started it yet. <laughs> I handed it in on Sunday. Uh, yesterday. Infographically you started like the night before. I think you need a little bit more time for this one. Yeah. I did mine in like it took me like two hours. It took okay. you two hours, including like research. Yeah. What? The <laughs> oh. I probably spent like at least ten hours on mine. I took maybe four hours, and that was while I was visiting and watching Netflix. <laughs> well, so I'm not saying that I that I did well. I have no idea how I've done yet. So we'll see. We'll yeah. see. Yeah, we'll have we'll have to compare marks. <laughs> <laughs> what was my topic? Uh, the arts in school. Oh, okay. I really struggle with the research part. Like, I actually changed my topic like three times because it's like I can't oh. find it. I did mine on the evolution of technology. And there was like quite a bit of information about that. So, that was good. Well, I did mine on.